Hello Year 10. This video is going to help you understand how to tackle the Paper 3 exam, which focuses on your Weimar and Nazi Germany topic. This is a walking, talking mock resource set up in the same manner as the Paper 1 walking, talking mock you completed at the end of your Medicine and Western Front topic earlier in the year. We will go through each question type and I will highlight for you top tips to help you gain full marks on each question. You'll be able to see the question format and how it will look in the exam paper. You will also see examples of questions and a good and average student answer to those questions. You will then get the chance to tackle another question yourself to practice the skills required to gain full marks as well as consolidating your knowledge. This video is essential to your revision and success in this exam paper. Therefore, you must make notes on each question type. I suggest you pause this video now to go and get a pen, paper or your exercise book and a highlighter or a different colour pen if possible. So let's look at question one together. Question one will always ask you to make an inference from a primary source. Now remember, an inference is when you make an educated guess about a particular topic using the information given to you. So for example, this question is asking you to focus on the early development of the Nazi party. In an exam, you would need to highlight or underline the words in the question, which comes after the word about. So if you look at the question at the top here, it says give two things you can infer from source A about. It's the bit that comes after there that you need to highlight because that is what you need to focus on. So whatever you infer from the source must link to those words. So in this case, the early development of the Nazi party. You will also be able to see how the examiner wants you to answer the question. If you look to the right hand side of the slide, you'll see the format that will be in the exam paper for you. It will always look like this. You must write an inference, then support it with the exact detail from the source that helped you make that inference. So when I say exact detail from the source, you literally quote the words that made you think that educated guess about the early development of the Nazi party. And you do that twice. And you can see that in that format on the right hand side of the screen. You must link your inference to the question, so again, in this case, the early development of the Nazi party, and you must then state the words in the source that guided you to this. So let's look at the primary source together. And I want you to highlight any details in the source that tell you about the early development of the Nazi party. So this is from a memoir of Ernest Rome. Remember Rome? was the head of the SA and it was published in 1928. So this is before the Wall Street crash, this is before Hitler was Chancellor or Führer, this is during Streisman's recovery years when the Weimar Republic were in charge of Germany. I introduced all my army friends to the German Workers' Party. This was how we built up the movement in the early days. In February 1920, the party presented its policies to the public for the first time in the 25-point programme. From that day on, the party membership began to increase so much that we had to move the meetings to much larger venues. After overcoming his opponents within the party in 1921, Adolf Hitler was elected the first leader of the renamed National Socialist German Workers' Party. So what can we learn 
about the early development of the Nazi party from this information. What words are we going to pick out of this source that helped us think about what we have learned? Let's have a look at some student answers to help us. So the answer on the left hand side received full marks. So let's have a look at what they wrote. I can infer that the Nazi party grew big very quickly. They're making an educated guess that the Nazi party got a lot more support, had a lot more members in the party. And what helped them make that educated guess were the actual words, membership began to increase so much that we had to move to much larger venues. Now, nowhere in the source does it say that the party grew very quickly, but this student has been able to infer that because they had to move to larger venues. They've also gone on to make an inference that the Nazi party initially attracted army men and soldiers. And they've got that from the words, I introduced all my army friends. This is how we built up the movement in the early days. So again, it doesn't say anywhere in the source that the initial support was from army men and soldiers, but it does tell us that the movement was built up from Rome connecting to his army friends. So again, that is a valid inference from the information in the source. If you look at the answer on the right hand side, this one only was awarded two marks because they haven't made they haven't made valid inferences. So if you have a look at the start, it says that the Nazi party was represented, um, sorry, the Nazi party was presented its policies to the public in 1920. And the words that they got that from are literally the party presented its policies in the um, its policies in the public to the public, I think. So the student is just repeating what the source is actually saying. They're not making a valid inference. And again, they do it again for the second inference. They say that Hitler was elected the first leader and they've taken that from the actual words Hitler was elected the first leader. So again, it's not an inference. They're just repeating what the source is saying. So therefore, they can only be awarded two marks in total. Now, I would like you to have a go at a question one yourself. But just to remind you, before you do, of the top tips that you need to make sure you consider. So you're only going to spend five minutes on this because it's only worth four marks. You write four sentences in total, one in each box. You give two things you can infer from source A about, and remember whatever comes after the word about is what you're highlighting and what you're focusing on. You need to use something that you can actually see or read in the source and you quote in the detail section. And your inference has to be a valid, educated guess. You can't just repeat what the source says. You can't just paraphrase what the source says. And you need to do that twice. So here's the question one I'd like you to have a go at. It should take you about five minutes. So if you pause this video now and have a go at this question, and once you've completed it, submit it to your class teacher via Microsoft Teams. Now, it's really important that you didn't spend much longer than five minutes on this question because it is only worth four marks and you don't want to waste your time on this question when you need more time to answer the other questions. Now, just to highlight to you that when you answered this question, you should have underlined or highlighted the words family life in Nazi Germany and the two inferences that you've made and the detail you've picked out of the source to support your inferences must be to do with family life in the Nazi in Nazi Germany. So the picture shows you an idyllic Nazi family, the woman taking the role of mother and the man looking like a worker providing for his family. 
The daughters are taking on typical girl roles, caring for children, babies, and the son taking on that typical role of, of a Nazi boy showing strength and working. So you should have been able to infer from this picture what family life in Germany was like. And then you should have supported it with a piece of detail that you could see in the picture. Let's have a look at question two. So question two will always be an explain why question. You have practiced answers to this style of question lots. Remember, you need to highlight the key words, and in this case, those are Nazis creating a police state. So the question's asking you to look at why the Nazis were able to create a police state in the years 1933 to 39. So the police state bit is what's the important part of this question. Now remember with an explain why question, you are given two bullet points. You don't have to use them, but they are there to try and help guide you. But you must use an example of your own which is not mentioned in the bullet points, otherwise your mark will be capped. What I would advise doing is writing next to those bullet points your own example so you don't forget to include it in your answer. So I might put another bullet point saying Gestapo or the SS, something that would be relevant for the Nazis creating a police state. Now you need to aim to try and have three paragraphs for this question, uh, this answer sorry, and you need to have a few examples in each paragraph. You don't need an introduction, and you don't need a conclusion. So let's have a look at some student answers. This first answer goes across two slides, so you might want to pause the video now and read these two paragraphs, and then I'll move on to the third paragraph in a little bit. Um, and as you read it, I want you to try and note down what makes this answer a good answer, what makes this achieve full marks. So the student uses clear language to highlight the different reasons why the Nazis were able to create a police state. One reason, another reason, a final way. They use the exact wording in the question to show explicit question focus. The Nazis were able to create a police state. They've written that at the start of every paragraph. They use relevant knowledge, concentration camps, law courts, Gestapo. They use specific details in each paragraph, for example, who exactly was sent to concentration camps. They have three paragraphs and they haven't wasted time writing an introduction or conclusion because they know they won't get marks for that. Have a look now at a student answer that doesn't score as many marks. This student got half marks for their answer. So pause the video now, have a read of this answer and try and work out why this didn't score as highly as the other one and have a look at the examiner comment at the end. So let's just refresh our memory about the top tips for question two. You're going to spend 15 minutes on it. It's always going to be an explain why question. You need to make sure you use accurate, relevant information adding examples and making sure you add an example that isn't shared in the bullet points, that you really focus on what the question is about and you try and use phrases like this suggests that, this highlights that to show that you are analysing your examples in light of the question. You're aiming for three paragraphs, no introduction, no conclusion. So. I'd like you to have a go at a question two type now. So pause this video for 15 minutes, complete this question, and once you have completed it, please submit your answer to your class teacher on Microsoft Teams. So hopefully with this question, you highlighted creating a dictatorship 
and you were focused on how Hitler created total power. You're looking between February 1933 to August 1934. So you cannot use the political deal in your answer because that happened before Hitler became Chancellor and Hitler was made Chancellor in January 1933. But you can use anything that is in your Führer acronym that you learned as part of your one of your remote learning tasks. So the Reichstag fire, Night of the Long Knives are suggested for you, but you could have also mentioned about um, banning other political parties and trade unions to gain total power, getting the army to sign an oath, President Hindenburg dying, allowing Hitler to take over that role of president as well as chancellor, making himself Führer, signing the Enabling Act. These are all things that you could mention in your answer. So let's move on and look at question 3a. So this second section of your exam paper, section B, has four questions, 3A, 3B, 3C and 3D. And all of these questions are linked to the same topic. So in this case, they're all going to be about Nazi policies towards women. Now, question 3A will always ask you to look at two primary sources and evaluate how useful they are. Again, you have practiced questions like this before and you completed a usefulness question in your paper one prep exam earlier in the year as well. You should have also completed a usefulness question as one of your remote learning tasks earlier on in lockdown. Again, you highlight the key words in the question, which you must repeat in your answer. So the words that you're highlighting are the ones that you are going to write. Useful, Nazi policies towards women. When looking at the sources, you only highlight the words or the details to do with Nazi policies towards women. So let's have a look at source B together now. And if you've got your highlighter or different colour pen, you could highlight key sections of this source. Source B is a speech made by Joseph Goebbels in March 1933. Just a reminder, Goebbels, remember, is the propaganda minister and March 1933 is when Hitler is making that move towards gaining total power in setting up a dictatorship. German women, German men, the birth rate in Germany is rapidly declining, so a major change is needed. We believe that German women must use their strength and abilities in different areas from men. Let me say this clearly. The first, best and most suitable place for the woman is in the family. It is her most glorious duty to give children to her people and nation. The woman is a teacher of the youth and therefore the builder of the foundation of the future. If the family is the nation's source of strength, the woman is at its centre. The best place for the woman to serve her people is in her marriage, in the family, in motherhood. Now, I want you to think about your own knowledge now and think about what you know that would be appropriate to link to the information in this source and make a note of it. In the exam, I would be writing all around this source, thinking of own knowledge that is suitable. So for example, source B says that the best place for women to serve her people is in her marriage, in the family, in motherhood. This makes me think of the knowledge I have on women being offered loans to get married and given bronze, silver and gold medals when they've had four, six or eight or more children. Have a look at source C now. Source C shows us women working in a textile factory in the city in 1938. Now I could link this to my knowledge that prior to World War II, the Nazis set up programmes to prepare for war, such as producing weapons. I also know that the Nazis' policy towards women failed, as many women did go to work and did not stay at home as the Nazis had wanted. So let's have a look 
at a top student answer to this question. Again, I suggest you pause the video now, read through this answer and read the examiner comments and try and think about what is so good about this answer. Just a little hint, remember when you have a usefulness question, you must look at the content of the source and compare it to your own knowledge. And then you also must look at the provenance of the source. So you must have a look at when it was written, what type of source it is, why would that maybe help add utility to the source, why would it make it more useful, or maybe why it limits the source. We often try and use the word panic to remind us to look at the purpose of the source, the author of the source, the nature of the source, your own information, which you link to the content of the source, P-A-N-I-C. Now let's have a look at an answer that didn't gain as many marks. But this one only was awarded five marks, so it's still a good answer, but it's not enough to get full marks. So pause the video now and read what this student wrote and try and think about why this answer didn't gain as many marks as the previous one. Now let's have a look at question, sorry, have a reminder of what we have to do for question 3A. So it's 15 minutes because you're going to spend about five minutes reading the sources and then 10 minutes writing an answer, spending five minutes on each source. You're going to think about the provenance of the source as well as the content and your own knowledge. It is essential you add your own knowledge to this question. If you don't, you cannot get over two marks. You must make a judgment about how useful each of the sources are. You don't need to compare the sources. You can look at them totally separately, but you must judge how useful each of them are. I would advise writing two paragraphs, one on source B, looking at the content, comparing to your own knowledge, and then the provenance, which is the blurb. And I would then write a second paragraph on source C, looking at the content, comparing to your own knowledge, and looking at the provenance, the blurb. You must write why it's useful. So now you've refreshed your memory of what you need to do for this question. I'm going to show you a question 3a and I'd like you to have a go at it. I'd like you to pause the video now for 15 minutes and once you've completed your answer to hand it in to your teacher via Microsoft Teams. Right, question 3b. This will always ask you to look at two interpretations and outline what each historian is arguing. And you need to highlight the difference between the two interpretations. So for example, interpretation one tells us about the Nazis' attempts to drive women back into the home. And it outlines that this isn't particularly successful. You can pause the video now and read through interpretation one. Interpretation two, outlines that Hitler is very clear that women should bring up children and they should get married and that their role is not in the workplace and that lots of women were sacked from jobs like being doctors or teachers. So again, you might want to pause the video now and read through interpretation two. Let's have a look at some student responses to working out what the main difference is between the two interpretations. So response one, you can see, was awarded full marks, four marks. Interpretation one suggests that the Nazi policies towards women working were unsuccessful. So they've outlined a brief overview of what the argument is, and then they supported it with a quote, the number of women in all types of jobs increased. They've used a word to compare However, on the other hand, and then they've outlined what interpretation two argument was, that Nazi policies towards women employment were very successful, and they've supported it with a quote again. 
If you look at the other response, you'll see that they've tried to outline what each interpretation is arguing, but they've not supported the answer with quotes. So therefore, they are only awarded two marks rather than four. So question 3b, just a reminder of what you need to do. You need to spend 10 minutes on it because you'll need five minutes to read the interpretations through and then five minutes to write your answer. You need to make sure you explain how the interpretations are different. And you need to make sure that you are focused only on the content of the interpretations. You do not talk about the blurb, the provenance at all. The best way to remember that the sources, primary sources, you do need to talk about the blurb for the usefulness questions. And for secondary sources, the interpretations you don't talk about the blurb is think about I for interpretation, I for ignore. You ignore the blurb. Where the source is S for source, you therefore you see the blurb. Again, don't spend too long on this question because it is only worth four marks. So have a look at this question now. Pause the video for 10 minutes, complete your answer, and then submit it to your teacher via Microsoft Teams. Let's move on now to question 3C. 3C will always ask you to suggest a reason why interpretations have different views. So essentially, it's asking why do historians have different arguments? Now, for this particular question, you can learn a set answer for this. So have a look at this set answer, pause the video and make sure you write this down because you will need to learn this and you can apply this to any question 3C in this exam. Interpretation one and two give different views about, and then you link it to the words in the question that you've highlighted. So in this case, about Nazi policies towards women, because historians have looked at different primary sources which have influenced their opinions. Then you need to go on and try and match up each interpretation with the primary sources that you looked at for the usefulness question. So if, for example, source B focuses on women being mothers and staying at home, then you would link that to interpretation two because that is arguing that women should stay at home and be mothers. Source C was the factory worker picture and that's highlighting that women are working and interpretation one highlights that women need to go to work and that the Nazi policies were not very successful. So that's how you would match them up. So I would then write, for example, the historian who wrote interpretation one focuses on women being mothers and getting married. And they may have been influenced by a primary source like source B. The historian who wrote interpretation two focuses on women um, working, and they may have looked at a primary source like source C, for example. So let's have a look at some student answers now. Pause the video, have a read, and hopefully you'll be able to see why the first answer gained more marks than the second answer. So let's just remind ourselves of your top tips for this question. And then when you're ready, have a go at the question on the next slide. Remember, when you are working with interpretations, you ignore the blurb. So you do not mention anything about the provenance. So it's not relevant to say that one is from a history book and one is from a website. And that's why they're different. You would get no marks for that answer. So have a go at this question now. Pause the video for five minutes. You've already read the sources through, so you shouldn't need any more time than five minutes because you are just writing your set answer. The last question of the paper is question 3D. And it's the main question on the paper because it is worth 16 marks. And you also get four marks on top of that 
for your spelling, punctuation, grammar and use of historical terminology. So do not forget your keywords for this question and make sure you use capital letters in the correct places. This question will always ask you how far you agree with one of the interpretations. So let's have a look at a student answer for this question. I suggest you pause the video here. The next slide has also got the rest of the answer on. So once you've read this slide through, then move on to the next slide and continue reading the student's answer. Now this student's answer gains full marks because they have clearly answered the question, they've quoted from the interpretation in the question, they've supported it with their own knowledge or challenged it with their own knowledge, they've also presented both sides of the argument. And to do this, they have to look at the other interpretation as well. So even though the question says, how far do you agree with interpretation two, you must mention both interpretation two and interpretation one. If you do not mention both interpretations, you cannot get over the first level in the mark scheme. Now have a look at an average answer. Again, pause the video and work out why this answer didn't receive as many marks as the other answer. Remember, you must look at both interpretations. So let's have a look at the top tips for question 3D. You're going to spend about half an hour on this question. At a minimum, you would spend 25 minutes on this question. But obviously keep an eye on the time because if you run over on a previous question, then you'll have to spend slightly less on this one. You need to make sure you identify the overall view in both interpretations, quoting from them. You need to support the interpretations with your own knowledge. You must look at the alternative argument and the other interpretation. And again, support with your own knowledge. You then have to reach an overall judgment outlining how far you agree with the interpretation outlined in the question. Just a reminder as well, you must focus on spelling, punctuation, grammar and specialist terminology. And you might want to pause the video here to read the mark scheme for this. So I want you to have a go at a question 3D now, spending between 25 to 30 minutes on this question. Pause the video now, have a go, make sure you submit your answer to your class teacher via Microsoft Teams. Well done Year 10, you have just completed an entire prep exam paper for Unit 3. If you've submitted your questions to your teacher, you will gain feedback on these over the summer holiday, so please make sure you check your Microsoft Teams assignments for your feedback. If you have any questions about any of these particular question types, please contact your class teacher and then they will go through it with you. We will also try and go through some of these questions in school as well. Good luck. Well done. You've completed the Germany course now.